Hi everyone, this is David again and welcome back to the Agile broadcast. Today we're going to look at the difference between incremental and iterative development. So what's the difference between incremental and iterative development? So the Scrum Guide, for example, will talk about uh, working in iterations to deliver a product increment. So they do use these two concepts, incremental and iterative. But what does it really mean? So you might think an iteration is just the, the cycle or the, the time you spend on doing something, right? An increment being the thing you produce at the end of that cycle. Or you might think the two are just synonymous. We work uh, in an increment or we, we, we delivered an iteration. It's kind of the same thing. It doesn't really matter. But there is a subtle but very important difference. And this is what we're going to explore now. To explain this, I'm going to borrow from Jeff Patton and the Mona Lisa. So here's the Mona Lisa being constructed piece by piece, or you might say increment by increment. But we know this is not how we would create a painting like this. We would perhaps first draw a rough sketch with a pencil. Then you add some rough coloring here and there, do the background roughly, and progressively refine the painting as you work on it. So both approaches would take you to the same end result. However, in the first approach at the top, you can see that you would need to know upfront every detail about the final product. So in the incremental approach, you can see that in the second step here, for example, you can see that you already need to know quite a lot of details about the final product. You, even for that little piece, you already know the detail of the, of the background, you know the size of the head that you're going to draw later, you have detail of the hair color, you've, dis you've made a whole bunch of decisions about what the final product would look like. And in that sense, it's not very different from waterfall. Now, in the iterative approach in the bottom here, it's easier to change your mind. As you can see in this, in this drawing here, we've changed our mind with the hand going from the mouth to the bottom of the picture. It was easy to change your mind because it was just a rough sketch. It's cheap to change your mind. It's cheap to make changes. Now, lots of teams don't really embrace iterative ways of working at all. And I see lots of teams just working, churning work, just doing increment after increment, building features after features. Now, people say they are iterating, but how often do you change your mind? How often do you redo a story? And remember, it's not really iterating if you're only doing it once. But it's not that iterative is good and incremental is bad. You have to do both, really. So here's the landscape. So if this is a scale about how incremental you are, and here a scale about how iterative you are, then in that bottom corner here, that's where you are, I would say, you are waterfall. You're neither incremental nor iterative. You kind of deliver everything at once, at the very end, in like in a sort of big bang delivery. Now, if you are incrementing, you might do something that I would call like a stage delivery approach, which would be here. If you're iterative, but not incremental, so you're doing a, lots of iteration where you work on everything at the same time, that would be the spiral model. Finally, if you're both iterative and incremental, that's where Agile really lives. And that's what I want to explore even more now. So the key here is to know when to be incremental and when to be iterative. Which bit of your project do you work in an incremental way and which part of the project do you work in an iterative way? Are there some features that are better built incrementally? Maybe there are some features that are better built iteratively. Now to help with explaining this, I'm going to have to introduce a new concept. The concept of fidelity. Carl Scotland has a really good way to represent this. If you're building a road, for example, uh, you might have a road that's just a dirt road. It gets the job done, but it's a bit rough. Or you might want a better road, like a paved stone road. Or you might want even better, an all singing and dancing motorway. Now, what's important to realize here is that the quality has not necessarily increased. The fidelity has increased. You can have a good quality dirt road, it just gets the job done from A to B. You don't damage your car as you drive on it. You could have a good quality uh, stone paved road as well. So this is not about quality. This is about increasing the, the resolution or the, the refinement, how refined the solution is to your problem. So you can have a low fidelity solution like the dirt road or a high fidelity solution like the motorway. 
Now, if we look at a software example, uh, a low fidelity solution to a problem could be just a command line utility with no user interface. And a high fidelity solution could be something that works across multiple devices with uh, a nice user interface, etc. Again, a low fidelity solution could still be high quality, scalable, reliable, no bugs, etc. So how does this fit with this idea of incremental and iterative delivery? Well, in the previous video, I drew this diagram. And on this diagram, we looked at the scope or the features and the architectural layers. We can add the fidelity as a third dimension to this graph. So when we work horizontally like this, the different features are worked on layer by layer at full fidelity. It's a big bang delivery style because nothing is ready until everything is ready. Now, if you're working incrementally, you're still developing the system at full fidelity increment by increment, feature by feature, which is how most people implement Agile. Now, if you're working in purely iterative mode, the picture looks very different. You would work on everything at a low fidelity, and then you build the system up, refining it as you go along. Now, a good approach would be to do both incremental and iterative at the same time. So you would first incrementally build the system at the lowest fidelity you can have, and that might be your minimum viable product, your MVP and then progressively refine the system in an iterative fashion. Here's a thing that can be really useful for product owners. Once you've understood the power of iterative and incremental development, you could sort of create some kind of uh, fidelity profile. So this would look a bit like this. As you have all your features and your scope defined here, you could for each of the feature define some kind of fidelity level. So for example, you might have your first feature at a lower fidelity, a feature at a higher fidelity, something with a medium fidelity, and something lower again, even lower, and something kind of medium-ish like this. So all these features are defined with different fidelity targets, let's say, that you want to have. So you can develop a strategy about what you want to have. Not all features have to be at the highest fidelity. Some things just need to be there because they just need to be there, but they don't need to be the most refined system ever. Some features, however, are the, the USB of your company, the, 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 the killer feature that really needs to be refined. Now, with such a fidelity profile, you can also develop some strategy about how you're going to approach your product development here. What are you going to do on your first release? Well, maybe the first thing we do is at the lowest fidelity. So we build these features, all the features at the lowest fidelity possible. But then, step two, release number two maybe, you say, okay, we're gonna focus on this guy and maybe increase that guy a bit. But then the rest, we keep it at the same. That would be release two. Release three, maybe we start to build on this guy. And finally, we increase the others. This is a great communication tool. You can use this to communicate how you approach your product development to your stakeholders, to your clients. You can define a product refinement strategy, which is much more sophisticated than just churning work and hoping for the best so that you get done before you run out of money. All right, that's it for now. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment or question in the comments below. And please subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notified when a new video comes up. And see you next time.